Flipping the slide over and grasping the frame, I line up the grooves on the slide with the frame just like so. I find that when I know how a tool or a machine functions, I have a better idea of how to make it work best for me. It's especially true for firearms. I'm Julie Golub, a pro shooter for Smith & Wesson, and in this Gun Smarts video, we're going to take a bit of a tour around pistols. I could walk you through dozens of different guns, but really when it comes to semi-automatic pistols, there are more similarities than differences. Some of those differences include whether a handgun is cylinder or magazine fed, where the ammo is stored in the handgun. We can talk about action type and how handguns fall into main types, hammer fired and striker fired. These refer to the type of mechanism that strikes the primer. A hammer fired pistol uses a mechanical hammer to force the firing pin forward and onto the back of the primer. A striker fired gun uses a captured firing pin with springs to punch the primer. Many common polymer frame pistols like the M&P series are striker fired handguns, but examples of hammer fired pistols include 1911s, revolvers, and the M&P Shield EZ. Now let's go a bit deeper into pistol anatomy, and as an example, I have a Smith & Wesson M&P pistol. Let's start at the bottom and move up. This is a magazine fed pistol and the base of the handgun where you grip it is called the frame. The opening at the bottom of the frame is called a magwell and it's where you insert the magazine or mag. Moving up, this button right here on the frame is what you press to eject the mag. It's called the magazine release or mag button for short. These other controls along the frame each have a purpose. In addition to any internal safeties incorporated into many handguns, your pistol may or may not have manual safeties like this. Flipping up engages the safeties on, down allows the gun to fire. Now, moving towards the middle of the frame here, we have the slide stop or slide release. You'll hear it called either term. Pressing up on the slide release after you pull the slide to the rear will allow you to lock the slide open, a handy feature that lets you see if your firearm is truly unloaded. When you press down on the slide stop or slide release, the slide will close. Here we have the takedown lever, critical for disassembling this pistol. First, you'll need to lock the slide to the rear, or it's already locked back in my case, and I'll twist to remove my grip tool right along on the bottom of the frame. I'll use it to press down on the sear deactivation lever in the frame. Rotating the takedown lever into this position allows me to remove the top end of the handgun. This upper portion of the pistol has several components. First, let's look at the spring. It's called a recoil spring. On the M&P, it's captured, meaning it won't fly out when you take it out, making it easier to remove. After that, we have the barrel. Comes out nice and easy, and this front portion of the barrel is called the chamber. It's where the round sits before it's ready to fire. Finally, what's left is this upper portion called the slide. It's the portion that moves back and forth when you shoot. Sitting on top of the slide, we have sights. Here we have the rear sight and the front sight. Before you do anything, make sure you check on your manual and read up to make sure you're doing everything properly. When you're cleaning and maintaining your pistol, you'll want to remove any dirt or buildup along the grooves in the slide and on the rails of the frame. Barrel safe brushes and swabs with an appropriate cleaner help you keep your barrel clean and your pistol accurate. After a good wipe down, a general rule of thumb is to use gun oil to lubricate the areas where you see metal on metal wear, but again, consult your manual for specific instructions. Putting it back together on this pistol is simple. A little pro tip here, when you're reassembling your firearm, avoid forcing anything unless your manual specifically says it may be tight. Things should go together rather easily. First, I place the barrel into the slide. Then I grab the recoil spring, making sure that I put it in the same way that I took it out, and it just presses right into place. Flipping the slide over and grasping the frame, I line up the grooves on the slide with the frame just like so. Then it's a matter of getting the slide locked fully to the rear and rotating the takedown lever into the up position. I release the slide and we're good to go. A few final important components in this pistol anatomy lesson are the ones that you'll want to pay attention to in order to be as safe as possible. The first is the muzzle. It refers to the end of the pistol, specifically the hole in the barrel where ammunition shoots from. Learning to constantly be aware of where your muzzle is pointing is a critical gun owner skill. Also important is the trigger guard. It's the structural portion of the frame in front of the trigger, but it's also your way to stay safer. 
Keep your fingers straight and outside the trigger guard unless you're ready to shoot. Becoming familiar with the anatomy of your firearm will not only make you more knowledgeable and safer, it will also help build your confidence. Remember to consult your manual for your pistol for specific instructions and for more videos to help you learn the basics of firearm safety, shooting, and more, make sure you're subscribed. If you found this video helpful, like and share it with others. Until next time, be safe and have fun.